Do you have a friend or a loved one experiencing intense grief? Do you want to be helpful, but you don't really know how? You see the pain and sadness that they're experiencing, and you want to relieve some of that burden for them. Maybe you even have a desire to fix it. Well, you can't fix it, but there's so much you can do to be present for your loved one experiencing intense grief. I'm Christy Bundukumara. I happen to be a psychiatric nurse practitioner, but my experience in grief has to do with my own intense grief. I have lost three children and my husband. And so I can really talk about what was going on after in the midst of the urgent or acute grief, and then what happens long-term with those friends family, acquaintances, and how to show up for someone who you care about. So statistics say that 74% of people experiencing grief do not seek out grief support. We've been taught that grief is normal and that you know time heals all wounds, and that is not necessarily true, especially in intense grief. And so if you are trying to help someone and You know, you think about right after the memorial service, even those first three months, lots of people are surrounding that person and trying to show comfort and doing things for them. I remember both the day, oh, all three days just flashed before my eyes. The day we lost Johnny was in a drowning accident and we were in Kentucky and had to get home, which was a 16-hour drive. And on that drive, I was just calling person after person after person to tell them this horrible news. And it was it was comforting. Uh, when we got home, we were surrounded by people. We had a memorial service. You know, friends and family knew that this grief was intense and they were there for us. But after three months, everyone else goes back to life. And that's a harsh, harsh reality. But for the person who's lost a child or any other significant grief, three months is just the beginning. And so if you want to be there for them, you know, as time goes by, it is about relationship. Another statistic, over 50% of people that have lost a child say that it is helpful to spend time with friends and family. But oftentimes we don't ask or we feel alone, we feel awkward, we don't want to invite ourselves, especially if, if it's a loss of a child and you know the gathering is you know with other children. The whole dynamics can be complicated and hard in your relationship with that person. But there were things that, that my friends did and continue to do that really make me feel good. And I will share all of those things with you. I want to start by saying what to expect in this person that you love, right? They are now a different person. Grief does change you. But what we need to try to focus on is that, yes, it changes you. You are a different person after you've lost a child or you've lost your husband or, you know, this kind of traumatic grief has happened to you, but you can confront it. You can get through it. And the support of friends and families is super important. What to expect in that first three months, numbness, shock. Sometimes we use the word denial, stay away from stages of grief. Look at my other videos about why stages of grief is not real. But in that first three months, There's disbelief, there's denial, not that it happened, but that the impact, the the gravity of the impact that it has on your life, there is pretty significant denial, right? Because you think you can handle anything and you're trying to figure out how you're going to get back to work and, you know, how you're going to function and how you're going to pay the bills or whatever the, the complications after that grief you're you're grasping onto something you can control and fix and that first 3 months i would not really be pushing your friend or family to be seeking help or treatment or go to a grief group 
Just let it be. Just be present with them. Let the reality sink in. I just had a vision of, of, you know, after Reggie died and the reality of fighting with medical trauma for 10 years for this boy and to lose him when I'm being tragically optimistic. You just got to let that sink in. And, And your friend might express sadness, might express anger. All of these things might come out in little bits and pieces. But in that first three months, I just want you to continue to be present for your loved one, for your family member, for your um, friend. When we get into the three to six months, this is where you can start, you know, kind of encouraging, um, working through grief, confronting grief, talk, maybe talking to someone, maybe going to a grief group, maybe just talking to you. But this is when that three to six months is when everybody else has gone back to life and they don't know what to say to, to the grieving person. And so they don't say anything at all. So in that three to six months, you're going to be that friend that continues to show up because the grief has barely set in. I would say somewhere in the six to six months to one year, the reality of the pain hits and sometimes abruptly hits hard. Sometimes it like trickles in and that's a little easier to handle, but it will happen in, in sometime in that time frame. Now, remember, I said that three to six months, everybody's gone back to their life and and the person experiencing grief feels alone. So again, what can you do? You can continue to show up. But this is the time where we can challenge to actually work through grief. And, And if they are talking to you and they are not just talking about their grief, they start telling you, oh, I was a horrible mother. This was my fault. Um blaming, having guilt, those are different feelings and emotions and they complicate grief. And this is where in all of my grief resources, we use the mentally strong method because we've got to separate that grief from the other stuff. If the death was due to a a gross injustice, that's a different category. You have to process and deal with that differently than you do your grief. So sometimes we you know, you, your friend, the person you're trying to help, there's so many complications around this grief. It's not just, you know, uh, embracing that relationship and being grateful for having that relationship, but it's also, you know, negative self-talk, anxiety, injustices. What about spiritual conflict? Being angry with God or, or the universe and, you know, karma, what did I do to deserve this? Those are spiritual conflicts. They're not grief. Grief can complicate those. And that's why learning the mentally strong method and in helping people separate those things so that they can confront their grief, that they can work through their grief, but their grief will change them. They are a different person, but it doesn't have to ruin them. So I want to just stop and say thank you for getting to this point for somebody else. You're watching this video because you care about someone who's going through grief. And I want to thank you for that because my friends and family continuing to show up for me means the world to me. And so what can you do? I can share with you the things that were helpful for me and continue to be helpful for me. Being present, I've talked about that over and over again, but being present to continue to grieve. I think sometimes we feel like it's been a year, we shouldn't have to talk about this anymore, or you know, we shouldn't cry when we think about something. And I just, I'm tearing up because I just had a thought about Reggie and how many people truly loved him. And I, I don't know that I talk about it enough. I've had so much grief. It's like, you know, trying to, to process it simultaneously and continue to find joy in my life. So that is your challenge for the person you're trying to help, is that, yes, this pain has changed you, but how can you find joy in your life? And what else do you need to do, you know, to be able to do that? So what have some of my friends done? They continue to be present for me. I have a 
a friend who just recently again invited me to a grief ceremony. Um, you know, anytime she's having some sort of ceremony, she invites me. Continuing to invite this person to events, regardless if you think it's going to be triggering or not. The most profound example of this for me is if you follow my story, you know that I moved to Colorado in a cannabis for kids movement called Charlotte's Web. And it was these kids with catastrophic epilepsy coming to Colorado to try to treat the seizures with cannabis. And it was about 250 families that we actually got to know each other on a personal level. And we are all friends. And each year, this organization called Realm of Caring has a like get together for all of these families. And I can tell you, they probably thought twice, should we invite Christy? I've lost both of my kids that had seizures. One from the trauma, the medical trauma, and one from sudden unexpected death and epilepsy. So I am literally every other mother's worst fear in that room. And they still invited me. And I felt welcome. That's huge. So do not stop inviting them to things even if it's things with children. Most recently, my sister is is about 12 years younger than me, but she is literally my best friend. And she, we're in different stages of our life. Her daughter is only eight years old and she has a friend with four kids and they were going camping. Now, I have no young kids, no business being out in the woods, but they invited me and that felt good. Now, I didn't go and spend the night. I did go and spend a little time and it was so joyous to see these kids running around in the woods, calling me Aunt Christy. And that felt good. That was important. And so as a friend, the most most important thing you can do is continue to be present. Allow them to talk about their grief, but don't allow them to mesh the negative stuff. That's not grief. That's something else. Three, continue to invite them. Four, acknowledge their child whenever appropriate. I was watching a little video. It was a sales. It was like a commercial for these little butterflies you can just clip into your hair. And we and there was other people sitting around and somebody said, oh my God, Maya would have loved that. Yes, of course I teared up. Of course, but it meant so much to me that someone else would, would think about my daughter and say her name. Continue to say the child's name. Bring them up whenever It is appropriate. Thoughtful gifts. With my son, Reggie, he was a Spider-Man fan. Everything was Spider-Man. The boy literally climbed on the walls himself. And people continue to buy me Spider-Man things, Christmas, Spider-Man ornament. You know, oh, they're at the store and see a Spider-Man mug. My daughter, it's mermaids. She swore she was going to grow up and be a mermaid. And the whole story of that is in, in my documentary. But people see mermaid gifts. My friends see mermaid things, and they just buy them for me. Um, there's a, a story most recently, and it was one of my best friends, her mother, which I'm not, I met, I've met multiple times, but we're not super close. But she was at a store, and she had to sign something, and someone gave her a mermaid pin to sign it. And she told my whole story and asked if she could have that pin so she could give it to me. Those things, when they come up, brace them, do it. If you think, oh my gosh, if I do this, is it going to hurt their feelings? Do it. Acknowledge their existence. Acknowledge their presence on this earth. Say their name. And lastly, be understanding that this process is long and it's hard, and it can be ugly. There has been times that I have personally had to go back and apologize to people that I care about because maybe I said something snappy or I was being irritable or something they said did hurt my feelings. Be understanding of that. Yes, it is hard to be the friend of someone going through intense grief, but it's even harder to be that person, and it would be even harder to do it alone. Thank you again so much for for wanting to be that person, that person that is there for them. You continue to embrace the journey of mental strength. 
help them embrace the journey of mental strength. We have tons of resources and videos um, that you could watch and maybe screen through. Because sometimes if you just say, oh, you got to watch this lady's grief videos, it might be too much. Maybe go through them yourself and pick one or two that you think would really resonate. We have a whole grief um, playlist, but I really want you to watch the video on how to ask if they're okay, right? Because how are you doing ends up with an answer of fine, which we know is not true. And so uh, this video talks about, you know, how to ask what their thoughts are. Thank you again for being present for someone grieving.